Hello and welcome to Screen Daily Talks. This is Elizabeth Cabeza, Spain correspondent for Screen International, and I will be moderating our panel today with the indispensable help of Michael Rosser. He will be handling the questions you want to ask our panelists in the last part of our one hour discussion. You can use the Q&A answer box. The webinar itself will also be available to watch on screendaily.com after it has taken place. So what are we discussing today? The topic, as you know, is working with the Spanish film sector, a panel sponsored by Filmin and the Atlantida Mallorca Film Fest with the support of the Spanish Film Institute, the ICA. The international demand for Spanish films and talent is making stars out of a new generation of directors and actors and making indie producers very sought after creative partners. Riding the wave of this new talent, Screen International has launched the first edition of Spain Stars of Tomorrow this year in partnership with the Atlantida Mallorca Film Fest, Spanish SVOD platform Filmin, and the Spanish Film Institute, the ICA, a supporting partner. Spain Stars of Tomorrow was inspired by the long running editions of UK and Ireland Stars of Tomorrow, and the names of our Spanish stars were revealed in July in Mallorca at the inauguration of the Atlantida Mallorca Film Fest. The supplement with all the information about these 10 rising stars will be released during the upcoming San Sebastian Film Festival, an occasion to celebrate the stars who will attend our reception on September the 21st. So new talents, thriving scene, to help us get a clearer picture of the value of Spanish content in the international market, the benefits of working with a Spanish co-producer and the new trends and names set to emerge from this flourishing territory, we have three great panelists that I have the pleasure of introducing to you now. Maria Zamora from Spanish film production and distribution company Avalon has an extensive filmography as a producer and a proven talent for spotting promising new names, like she did with director Carla Simon, whose summer 1993 won the best first feature award at the 2017 Berlin Alley. And more recently, Maria has worked with other directors like Clara Roquet, whose film Libertad premiered in the Critics Week in Cannes in July. Maria Zamora is also behind Carla Simon's second feature, Alcaraz, shot this summer, and is in pre-production on Alvaro Gago's debut film, Matria, Gago being one of the screen Spain stars of tomorrow. Welcome and thank you for joining us, Maria. My Oh, yeah, hi. Mayalin Beloki has been deputy director of the San Sebastian Film Festival since 2016 and is in charge of the festival all year round policy, the festival's major strategic commitment to fostering new talents that she will explain later. She can also tell us in depth about San Sebastian role as a meeting point for the Spanish and international film industry, as well as a platform for nurturing new projects. Thank you for being here, Mayalen. Busy as you must be, just a few days before the start of the festival next week. Hello, thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. As development and acquisitions executive at London-based international sales, production and finance company, Protagonist Pictures, Marielle Membreno, our third panelist, is responsible for helping build the slate of the company with a focus on festival breakouts and emerging filmmakers. She sources projects for international finance, production and sales. Protagonist is handling the sales of the Media Pro Studio title official competition that just premiered in Venice unofficial competition, of course. It's Spain. Uh, it's a Spain-Argentina production starring Penelope Cruz, Antonio Banderas, and Oscar Martinez, which we will discuss in a minute. Welcome, Marielle, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. So to, to start, I would like to ask all of you if you feel there's a, such a thing as a Spanish brand, something that stands out when you talk to buyers, to festivals, to international industry players. Uh, maybe we can, we can start with you, Maria. How do you feel it has evolved? Yeah. What? Oh, sorry. Did you say Maria or Maria? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Maria, Maria. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry, Maria, I feel like that might happen a few times um, based on our on our names. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, from 
my perspective coming from a, a non-Spanish speaking company, um, we, we feel that the international market really loves Spanish content. Um, it translates incredibly well to international territories. And I think um, there may be uh, an idea of Spanish content that um, is perhaps in some ways um, more fun and more accessible than other European countries. Um, although there is local content that might have less cultural resonance outside of Spain, I, I do think that there's um, an idea um, of, of Spanish content that kind of leans into um, the vibrancy and fun and accessibility, um, which is definitely in its benefits. Um, and the other um, aspect to it is that um, for European territories, there often are dubbing content. So there's less of a, a language barrier there for English speaking territories, which may have subtitles um, and which might be a barrier towards accessing um, non-English language content. I think, you know, especially within Europe, um, that barrier is, um, is removed slightly through, through dubbing. Um, and I think that's also helpful is uh, particularly thinking of uh, Spanish cast and how internationally recognizable those names are, which can really help obviously sell a film as well. And I think, um, I think finally, uh, in terms of uh, the conversation around television and streamers, I think they have done a great deal towards bringing, um, for example, some high-end Spanish television shows to audiences around the world. And Maria, um, could could you maybe give us a, uh, your point of view from the from the production angle of things of how you how you see the um, the Spanish uh, films are perceived uh, outside Spain? Um, well, in my experience, what I've been um, seeing recently in the recent years is that all the new generation of producers and also directors we have uh, become more aware, more and more aware of how important it is to, uh, you know, international size. I don't know if this word is in English is right, if this word is right, but um, like to, to try to put the projects before they are already done, already in the market. So to try to go outside Spain before uh, we, made the, we make the films. That's something that when I started, it was something not a little bit rare. And now in the last year is something that is much more common to see Spanish projects among, um, you know, labs or residencies or co-production forums or things like that. So um, I, I think that's a very important uh, start to make, you know, uh, the rest of the European countries more aware of what is going on in a country, in a country like Spain. So I think it's a, it's a good start, a starting point. Before we go on to you, Mayalen, Maria, um, I, I, I will certainly go back uh, to the point of wh where uh, and when should work start in order to make sure that uh, that each project finds its path. And, and also Maria pon pointed out uh, the role of streamers in, in highlighting a, a new uh, generation of, of stars that can draw audiences to the content. But do you, do you feel going back to the concept of the Spanish brand, do you think that um, there's there's a, a common trait in in the new films, the new filmmakers that are, are coming out uh, of Spain from a production point of view? And then I will ask my Yalin from a, from a curating uh, point of view as well. Um, what I, I don't think there's a a brand in the sense of uh, themes or because I really believe there are the variety of our of our cinema and the, the different proposals that come come out of Spain are really, really different from one from each other. But it's true that what I miss mostly in, in the last years is this kind of uh, medium budget and me or medium films that used to be done because now they are i think it's much more it's it's, it's much more polar, polarized uh, in the sense of the there are all the or there are big budget films or family films or comedies or things like that which are more 
targeted for an audience, uh, local audience, or then there's these independent author-driven films. Um, so the medium films that used to be done that, that Europe still does, because they have their sources or the, the sources of financing those kind of films, and we don't have them uh, anymore. So I, I think we, uh, in that sense, we miss that kind of films that are also driven maybe, but also uh, searching for a crossover audience. Uh, I think we, we, we're, we have a lack of that. But in terms of variety, I think it, it's really, I mean, we have, we don't have like a, a trend or, I would say that, of course, because now there are a lot of more women director coming out of, you know, uh, and uh, doing their first or second or third films. Um, of course, there's a lot a, a diversity, even brighter than uh, of themes uh, on of, of, of main protagonists of the of the films, but that, that would be all I think. Just a quick um, uh, clarification for the audience. Maybe when we talk about uh, medium-sized production, what kind of budget would we be talking about to, to get an idea from, from outside Spain? I would say about, um, among two and four, something like two million, four million, something like that. Okay. So um, Mayalen, going back to this concept, so the idea of, uh, of um, a Spanish brand, the, the new trends of uh, Spanish cinema from a curating point of view, what, um, what do you think? Yes, I feel like in the recent years, we can find a lot of Spanish movies in the, in the international festival circuit. Uh, not only in San Sebastian, obviously we always been committed to show and to promote the Spanish cinema, but now I feel like you can find the Spanish uh, films in all the international film festivals. Uh, well, a lot of different and young filmmakers such as Clara Roque, Oliver Lax, Belen Funes, Carla Simón. So I, maybe I feel like there's been a jump of a new generation getting to the, to the international festival circuit. And then uh, obviously, as Maria said, uh, a lot of them are women. So, and that's something new. I mean, there are more uh, women making films and were more festivals selecting uh, these films. And then in terms of uh, a trend, I feel like, as Maria said, it's, you know, it, it, there's a huge variety in the films. And I feel like it's something good because they have a lot of different stories to tell and different ways of understanding cinema. So that, it's been translated to the movies too. So I think for me, it's like the best uh, to see like uh, a lot of Spanish films, uh, really different films and a lot of women making films too. Um, it's interesting to have the, the perspective from outside Spain. So let me go back to, to Marielle from Protagonist Pictures. Could you tell us um, how did protagonists come to handle the sales of official competition? Just, just, just to have an, an example of how that came about and what your strategy has been towards the film after uh, its success in, in Venice. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I guess in terms of um, the non-English language titles on our slate, there's a couple of factors that we assess when looking at projects. And so for official competition specifically, there were um, many, many attractive elements to the project when we boarded. Um, one was um, the filmmakers themselves. So Protagonist is very director led as a company across both our sales slate and our development slate um, and uh, creating long lasting bonds with filmmakers is very important to us. Um, and so uh, we were familiar with Mariana Cohn and Gaston Dupas work before uh, boarding the project. Um, so it was an opportunity to work with them. And it was also, uh, again, in terms of relationships, an opportunity to work with MediaPro, um, which was very important to us. And I think then finally, in terms of the, um, the creative aspect of the film and the script itself, uh, we fell in love with the, with the script immediately um, and found it to be an incredible comedy that we knew was going to translate internationally, which was quite important to us taking this project out to market is, um, is finding those comedies that um, managed to ha have resonance outside of, of, for example, outside of Spain 
or Spanish speaking countries. Um, and I think the peculiar brand of humor, specific brand of humor um, that they bring to the project uh, is, is translatable worldwide. Um, and while it's discussing um, humor that is inherent in art and in filmmaking itself, it never fails to alienating or to niche for audiences. Um, and so we fell in love with the script immediately and are so happy to see the reception um, that it had in Venice and, and how it was um, loved by both critics and, and buyers alike. And I think it connected with them in the same way it connected with us. And in the context of COVID, I think buyers were really looking for material that they could laugh at. <laughs> And this really ticked that box for them, um, while also being very smart with the kind of razor sharp satirical edge to it as well. Um, so for us, it's been overall a, a COVID success story in a way, because we launched the project in Berlin for pre-sales in 2020. Uh, we all can remember that Berlin. <laughs> that Berlin. Um, and then the movie started shooting shortly afterward and was, was actually shut down due to COVID with about three weeks left to go. One of the, you know, one of the stars contracted COVID, unfortunately. Um, but ultimately the timeline wasn't that disrupted by COVID. Um, and so we were able to, to have the, our festival premiere in Venice, which went down really well. We had invitations to some of the best festivals and felt like Venice was um, the best home for it. Um, and, and yeah, we've, we've sold out very quickly in all European territories and, and also have Curzon as our partner for the UK. So uh, it is a big success story for us. Um, and it's, very we're ha very happy that it's um gone so well and uh it just means that the this non-english language portion of the protagonist sales slate is is more important than ever and we are so excited to be championing those voices i was going to ask you what was uh protagonist's experience with spanish-speaking films before this and 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 what what are your plans for the future in terms of uh, working with, uh, with Spanish companies? Yeah, absolutely. So we've also worked with Michelle Franco in the past um, on April's Daughter, uh, which we premiered in Cannes and had a wonderful experience working on that project. Um, and the, the desire is certainly there. Um, I will be attending San Sebastian and I can't wait to be uh, screening films in the new directors category and Horizontes Latinos category um, and to me meeting filmmakers there as part of the, the residency and as Maria was mentioning earlier um, it's a it's a pleasure to see Spanish filmmakers presenting projects for example in Torino Film Lab and Cannes Cine Fondacion um, which are very important to us and we, we travel to those those markets every year looking for talent and and as emerging filmmakers are and continue to be an important part of the protagonist brand we certainly hope to work with more Spanish filmmakers and more companies in the future whether that's part of perhaps uh, strategic partnerships on the production side or with specific filmmakers themselves and producers as well. Um, is your experience that uh, some territories uh, are more difficult than others when you're dealing with, uh, with a Spanish-speaking film or Spanish, uh, Spanish production, like in, like in this case? So, and I would also uh, like to ask Maria and Mayalen if they, if they, if they want to, to contribute to this point as well. You know, territories that are more reluctant than others, uh, how does that work in terms of uh, sales? Marielle. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, well, I suppose that's a more general question about specific territories and how they um, perhaps view certain subject matter, certain genre, certain cast. Um, you know, again, I think official competition is a great example of a, a comedy that can travel. And again, bringing it back to uh, Spanish cast. I think Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz are two of the most recognizable actors. Um, so that certainly helps uh, for territories that um, 
you know, are looking for content that their audiences will recognize the cast attached to it. So for us, that was um, certainly a little, a big part of the strategy. Um, but yeah, I, in terms of Spanish content in particular, I don't know if I, I have an answer for territories that uh, may be slightly more challenging. I think it always comes down to um, genre and subject matter uh, in, that, in that case. We also need to take into consideration the, the vast Spanish uh, speaking market in terms of, of countries. So I don't know if uh, um, Mayalen and Maria would like to, to talk about this. Yes, uh, the Spanish market is pretty big uh, because of the Latin American countries. So there is a market for Spanish films, but then I feel also that through the platforms, Spanish contents are getting to other countries that maybe were a bit more reluctant to watch in Spanish films. And I hope this will serve to open to the theatrical releases too. Um, I don't, I, I, I really don't know if there's any country which is reluctant to, or more reluctant to watch Spanish films, but I think it has a pretty big market itself and it's getting bigger even through the platforms. And I hope that it will go to the theatrical releases. And Maria? Yeah, I agree. And you know, actually, um, as the Spanish language has so many countries that speak this, the same language, we have a huge uh, um, first, we would say like first territory to, to explore um, as, our, as our own. The thing is that, for example, I've, I've produced some uh, co-official speaking languages uh, uh, films, uh, for example, Alcaraz or Carlos Simon's latest film or Álvaro Gago's next, next film, they are both co-official, they are not in Spanish. And that is something that I, I really, as a producer, when trying to finance it or find partners, I did find some reluctancy there because, of course, you miss all those countries, all those Spanish-speaking countries, because they are, uh, they are then taken as foreign films, uh, foreign-speaking films. So in that sense, yes, but if they are Spanish-speaking films, I don't think there's... I've never encountered this situation. You mean that uh, Carla Simon's new film, Alcaraz, has been shot in Catalan? In Catalan, and Alvaro Gago is in Galician. So, and I've produced two other films in Catalan. So in that, in that precise uh, um, situation, I, I guess I have found this, uh, this situation that for Spanish speaking countries, Latin American countries, basically, they find it more difficult to dis find distribution uh, our sales companies, if it's, uh, of course, a co-official uh, language than if it's Spanish, of course, and it's, it makes sense, I mean, um, Marielle mentioned the role of uh, streamers in sort of uh, promoting a new a new generation of, of stars uh, earlier. Uh, the concept of streamers, uh, international streamers, uh, local streamers that are 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 doing uh, very well in Spain. Um, what is your perception of how you know these new players uh, um, adapt to? Each each of your uh, line of work, you know. Of course, you have uh, you you work in very different sectors, or, or well, you know, uh, complementary sectors of the of the industry. So, how how do you see the impact of uh, of that? If you could elaborate uh, a bit, I don't know. Yeah, who want, who would like to start? Um, I could, yeah, I could start. I think. Um... In terms of talent, what the streamers are able to do in terms of, uh, you know, allowing a platform and financing for, for new voices, I think that's really wonderful. I think obviously working at an international sales company um, in terms of putting projects together independently, I would just, you know, like to remind those filmmakers that um, there are still homes in which you can find to put together your project, um, the independent route, uh, and and hopefully, um, as as sales companies and sales evolve, um, as protagonist has, um, we will continue to find innovative ways 
to help put projects together, whether that's uh, small scale or larger scale. Um, our aim is to really board projects early and help the producers find a way, find a path to production, whether that's incorporating um, pre-sales, whether that is um, acting as a bridge between soft money and finding harder equity, which is something that we can help with. Um, yeah, I think it's important to recognize uh, that the indie film sector is just as important as ever um, and festivals continue to be as important as ever as serving as a, a launch pad for these films, especially um, auteur driven content. Um, yeah. And Maria, I don't know if you would like to, to sort of talk from the producing angle of things because you, 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 you work, you have to work, but in what terms uh, in order uh, to avoid um, certain risks of, you know, delegating too much uh, onto the, the platforms? This is such a tricky question because we could start talking, I mean, we could stay talking for hours about this particular thing. But um, um, I think that, of course, the, the, um, the platforms have been very good for producers in general in terms of uh, work. I mean, we have a lot of work. We have more opportunities. The market give us more opportunities to produce, especially TV series, uh, also sometimes films, but because of the originals, but usually TV series. But um, I think it's a, it's a tricky uh, opportunity in terms of uh, for an independent producer, uh, because of course they keep all the copyright. Uh, of, of course, not in all, uh, Marielle but can explain that not in every country, but in Spain they do by now, uh, until now. Um, so this is quite tricky because then the producers kind of turn into some of a work for hire person, you know? And um, are the producer who try to be creative producers um, would like to, to keep our directors, um, you know, the, the, the possibility of uh, uh, the free, the, to feel free about the content they, they, they produce or they make and uh, with platforms this is not something that is always a possibility. Of course there are exceptions because their platforms more and more are, are doing already in France and of course in the United States they are giving the opportunity for authors to do what, whatever they want to do but in Spain so far it's been more like um, a tailor-made uh, thing for what they were looking uh, in terms of what their audiences were looking for at the platform. So um, I think there's now an, a big an opportunity because of the of the regulations that European um, uh, the European Convention has to be has to be they have to take um, uh, decisions on what what is uh, known as European work, what is uh, perceived as a Euro, as an independent producer, and these definitions will um, protect uh, the the independent film industry very much. And in Spain, we have this uh, um, this issue that we are not able yet to convince our um, our politics that this is uh, such an important thing to make the platforms um, invest in European cinema, in Spanish content that is independent. That's something that, for example, in Spain, in France or Germany, they have it very, very clear. But in Spain, we don't, we haven't managed by now uh, the producers of the whole industry to convince the politics that this is a key issue for the survival of the independent film uh, sector. So it has both sides, you know. And Mayalen? Yes, uh, from a festival's point of view, some years ago we had, when the issue arose, we did have to decide whether we were going to select films that were produced by uh, platforms or not. And we felt like we wanted to be like a really good platform for the promotion of the films so that we were going to select films uh, produced by platform, even for the competition in all the sections. 
uh, because we thought that it was not the festival's role to decide or to to decide how you know the development of the market. Even though we know that we we have something to say about that, but we didn't want to close that gate. And we felt like, and we still feel like, uh, there's room in terms of, of a selection of the film festival. There's room for uh, uh, traditional conventional productions and new platform uh, productions. And we really think that the, you know, the issue of the survival of the uh, cinema theaters uh, will have to find a way to to come back, to to live with the, these other different uh, windows. And uh, I think it's something that uh, we are still living and we still don't know where uh, we are going to be in some years, more with the pandemic, because you know it's been a change in that sense too. But as uh, a San Sebastian Film Festival, I think that our mission is to be a good, uh, to help films to promote and to be a place where the professionals can make business. And we felt like we couldn't like, close the gate to the platform produced films. Because, um, because platforms are always, um, you know, uh, are a good way as well of accessing the work of new talents, I guess, because, you know, we, we saw that during the pandemic, but it's true that, uh, um, well, you, uh, Maria, for example, you, you, you have worked uh, with them. Uh, so um, what role do they play in, in the sort of the difficult uh, task of getting new uh, talents uh, known, uh, not only in Spain, but outside Spain too? Maybe uh, that's a question for, for Marie. Um, in my experience, because, well, going back to what I just said, I have to say that I'm working with platforms. I mean, I'm really happy to be working with platforms. We are working um, on series and also on, in, on original. So and in the case of the original, for example, the, that was a film that had been going on uh, for quite time and I couldn't manage to finance it out of the market because of the budget which was not not low uh, it was uh, higher than the than the medium so I had we're, we were very lucky to have this platform who wants to come on board and we are developing in, we are in the stage of development uh, right now so I'm saying that it has both sides so let me be clear on that side. But um, going back to what you said, what I found is that it's very difficult for platforms to come on board with new talent. I mean, for, for me, with the projects I've, I've seen around me, it's more for, for directors or creators who, which have already, who have already a career, who have credits on their own, and, uh, and that makes them feel comfortable enough from, from the platform point of view to say okay let's go and uh, let's invest all this amount of money on on their works but for new talent for me i i haven't had that experience myself and uh, when it comes to new talent precisely uh, and before i move on to that uh, i would like to remind uh, our audience that if uh, you have any questions for our wonderful panelists uh, please put them forward so we can we can sort them out. We're we're doing so, but uh, we'll move on to that uh, in about uh, ten minutes. So uh, please uh, let us know if you have uh, any questions. So going back to new talents, um, Mariel, Maria, um, uh, what do you need to see in a in a project? to make you jump on board. And something that came up earlier that I wanted to go back to is at what point, because uh, maybe we talk about content, uh, but also it's it's quite key to know when uh, you you can jump on board. And, and also then afterwards, uh, I would like to know about the, the work San Sebastian is doing in, in promoting and, and again, when and how um, new projects uh, have to uh, can uh, be of interest of, uh, to you. So let's start with you, Marielle, if you if you want. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, for for protagonists, irrespective of genre, I think for us the key thing is a very strong, clear concept is what we're looking for in in each project. So. 
I think I would suggest for, for more emerging filmmakers to lean into the hook of your film. So what is unique or fresh about your project or maybe what your film is going to bring to the genre that might be new for audiences to experience, what makes it stand out? Um, are there any clear comps um, that are maybe of a similar scale that you can um, that you can reference? Um, and I think in terms of um, when we come on board material, it's it's from early stages to very late stages, and it really depends on the needs of the project. Um, we often play a very key role in building the finance plan that best suits the film. So therefore we often end up coming on board projects very early, um, but usually when there is a filmmaker attached, although there's always exceptions to that, um, but usually there is a filmmaker attached to the project. It might be at script stage. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're, we're a very filmmaker led company. So we are always looking to build strong relationships with the talent we work with, um, which is a large part of our strategy as well. Um, so we're working more and more with producers in an exec producing capacity to help build their projects. So, and that's no matter where the projects are from or where they are set, um, we can often be, like I said before, um, that bridge in the finance plan, uh, whether that's uh, European co-production that's utilizing soft funding and also has a missing piece of financing, we can often help in those situations. Um, so we kind of look at the project and the needs of the producer and uh, figure out a way to get involved and figure out how to help push that project forward. I think for um, debut films and for new talent in particular, it is very important for us to board early. Um, and that's very tied into uh, creating an initial excitement and buzz around the filmmaker at preceding markets and festivals before the sales launch. Um, so while we may not end up selling the film until it's uh, gone into production or completed, um, and there's a lot of work we'll do beforehand to position the film and the filmmaker to the wider market and bring that attention and buzz to the, to the project. Um, perhaps even setting up meetings between key distributors and the talent, which is something, uh, you know, for example, um, one of our recent successes, St. Maud, um, it was very much a case of building up excitement about that film beforehand and we we, we also had a um a, a scene a few scenes from the film that we showed at can grade eight so that can be a great strategy too is making sure there's a promo or uh, some footage to show buyers as well so that really fits into our overall st sales strategy um so yes in terms of a good time to share projects with us as early as as you would like um to, to help us really perhaps assess the project and figure out exactly how we can become involved and how we can um, help you in your path to production. And any specificity concerning Spanish uh, productions? Yeah, I think, um, again, irrespective of, of language, I think a very clear concept is always helpful. Um, and again, it, it just using official competition as an example, um, the, the film doesn't feel like a, a local comedy by any means. It's a very um, translatable film, even though it is a comedy. Um, you know, another genre that tends to translate quite well is, is horror genre films too. Um, we've certainly seen that that is the case with uh, with a few Spanish filmmakers who have really made their mark in the horror space. But I think, uh, again, that's a genre that can be made for sometimes quite a low budget and it can often be sold on concept rather than uh, something that is very cast driven where you need a certain level of internationally recognized cast. Maria, let, let me rephrase the, the question and, and, and focus it, for example, in the case of uh, Carla Simon's summer 1993, when you jumped on board, what did you see 
there that you thought, yeah, I must absolutely uh, make this film. Uh, and also, I don't know um, if it's a challenge then to go for the second feature, because often uh, we forget, and uh, specifically in the Spanish um, context of uh, funding, is it more difficult when it's a second film or not? Or, you know, if you could explain, but maybe focusing on the case of uh, Carla Simon's um, films. Okay, uh, with Carla, with Summer 1993, I, I first read a, um, I cannot say no, a treatment, sorry. I first, uh, I read the first treatment I, and I, it's the first time that just reading a treatment, which is, was maybe 10, 12 pages, I just start, you know, start crying at the end of it. So just like in, it happens sometimes some people in the film when the when the girl finally explodes uh, and, and and finally is able to cry so for me that was like a, a gut feeling that there was something there really really strong and really and really really real uh, and of course it was uh, it was her own story so for me it was very special special to meet her and to see how she she had it all clear in her mind uh, even with a uh, you know there. Are, pictures from her childhood that are exactly the same shots in the film. So she had it really, really, you know, she had been working on the film for, for a long time already. And with the second uh, film, as you asked, um, it was, uh, to tell you the truth, it was very easy because as summer 1993 was such a huge success in Spain, but also abroad. And it was sold to almost all, all territories. It was quite easy to tell you the truth to finance to finance Alcaraz. Um, I think it has been the easiest, the easiest film I finance. Even if it's it's not a, a small budget film, it's a three million uh, budget film, and it's a co-production, and it's it has like a lot of source of financing. I, I mean, Yuri Mash and co-producers and Mkado is involved, and a lot of uh, sources of financing. So I mean, there's there ha it has been such a tough work but almost every time was a yes which usually with first-time directors uh it's much more complicated so um so being a second film and, and having uh, been a success the first one yeah it was it was quite easier so Mayalen, could you elaborate uh, on on the idea of uh when and how you help new projects shortly and because we have a lot of questions from from the audience so we'll move on to that <laughs> my Ellen, your mic is off i'm sorry i'm going to keep it short the san sebastian film festival is the spanish most important festival and as such we have the mission to promote the spanish cinema and also we have the the commitment to support new talents. So, and we do it in various ways. Uh, on the one hand, by contributing to the promotion of the Spanish films outside our borders, by selecting films in its different sections. And in that sense, I think that, uh, you know, uh, in terms of new talents, we have a new director section, which is for us like the second most important uh, section of the festival. And um, I think this is a proof of com uh, the, the commitment, commitment of the festival to the, you know, to help the promotion of the new talents. But on the other hand, we, we, we don't only like help promoting, uh, we want to get into the training programs of the new generations. And that's why we take part in a film school, which is called Elias Querejeta. And we are part of the academic board of the film school. It has uh, three postgraduate studies, uh, in film archive, film curating, and um, in filmmaking. And that's a way for us to get like to the new generation of the Spanish, not only Spanish, but also Spanish filmmakers. And uh, we also have a section which is called NEST International Film Students Meeting, which is specifically to show the graduation films of the students all over the world. So I think that a festival can also get into the formation or training uh, and we do it uh, by a film school and by having this, this section. And also, uh, and lastly, we do have um, a program to support the development of the projects of the Spanish, it's an international call, but we always have Spanish filmmakers there. Uh, it's a residency program, which is called Icus Miraberriac. And um, that's how we wanna help them develop the projects. 
it's a residence that takes place here in San Sebastian in two stages. And uh, a lot of filmmakers that have be, uh, developed their project there, now they are in the theatrical releases or in film festivals, such as uh, Samuel Delgado and El Ajirón, uh, their film El es Transportan a Morte, it was released in Venice and now it's coming to the San Sebastian Film Festival. So it's a way for us also to support uh, the projects of the Spanish filmmakers. Okay, so we have uh, we have a, a, a ton of questions here, so we'll try to answer as many as many as possible. Uh, so the first one, I guess, um, more for for Maria. How has the big investment from streamers in Spain affected the indie film sector? More competition for crews or you know studio space, uh, Maria? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, now it's really, really hard to find a DOP or a line producer or even a casting director. I mean, everybody's working because of the of the uh, huge amount of work that is uh, going on in Spain right now because of the platform. So yeah, uh, in terms of crew, especially on crew, it's uh, it's uh, very hard. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's also good for them. They are really happy. All the crew is happy. I guess you have to make a lot of phone calls to get, uh, you know, <laughs> to go through the list. <laughs> anyway, um, second question, as an international producer, what financial in incentives are available to me if I could produce with a Spanish producer? Um, how much do we have to shoot in Spain, for example? I guess that, that one is for you too, Maria. <laughs> Yes, um, well, we do have a tax incentive system that, uh, and it depends on what region you're, you're shooting, you have one intensity or, or, or the other. Uh, for example, if you shoot in Canary, Canary Island, you have up to 50%, but if you shoot in the, in the north of Spain, in Navarra, for example, you have 35%. Um, if you shoot in the rest of Spain, it's 30 So it depends on when you shoot. On where you should. Of course, uh, we have something that is very important for every foreigner to know that is in the last two years we've managed to convince our ICA uh, to get uh, a specific uh, co production minority support fund. So, uh, through that, we have been able to be, become minority producers and being able to bring uh, soft money to the table for uh, this uh, kind of co productions, not only the tax incentive, but also soft money from uh, public funds, not only ICA, but also regional fans uh, in the last two years have, uh, have put out, out uh, um, applications for these kind of minority co-productions. And of course, the, uh, we also have the locations which are very you know, diverse and the climate, climate, which is always good to shoot in Spain because it's, it's nice weather. <laughs> okay, a question for Mayalen. Can just celebrated a very original French film with uh, Titan. Uh, can we expect something similar out of San Sebastian? What are some bold Spanish movies we can look forward uh, to from next week? Mayal and your mic. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm a disaster with these things. <laughs> no, I was saying that uh, you never know which film is going to win the Golden Shell in this case, because that's up to the jury but we feel like we have a strong, very strong and diverse films in all the sections of the festival. In the main competition, uh, you can find Dicia Arboyain, Fernando León de Aranoa, Paco Plaza, Anjon Astrueba, uh, for really different filmmakers, but really interesting filmmakers. And then out of the competition, there's uh, also uh, Martin Cuenca, and you will, you will be able to see the series of the Alejandro Amenábar too. And then you can find uh, Spanish uh, films in all the sections. In the new director section, it's mostly Spanish co-productions, maybe not Spanish filmmakers, but well, the production is Spanish too. And um, I, I really hope that one of the big, uh, you know, surprises of the festival, it's a Spanish movie, but that depends on the jury. Thank you. <laughs> so um, um, the, the, this idea of the new generation of, of uh, women filmmakers has, has come up uh, several times during, during our chat. Um, I was wondering, uh, for example, from protagonist's point of view, uh, what will you be looking for and where to in San Sebastián? My 
Yeah, so I think um, it will really be a mix of uh, making sure that uh, that we're tracking some of the slightly more established Spanish filmmakers that Maya Len just mentioned. But again, I think uh, what we find exciting is making sure that we are covering all of the newer filmmakers too. Um, uh, and again, taking part in the um, the co-production market as well um, to find projects at an early stage. So I think, uh, yeah, we are interested in meeting with uh, producers and filmmakers um, who have very singular original ideas um, and hopefully with projects that we would be able to launch uh, at an A-list festival and will be um, you know, widely loved and accepted by audiences worldwide. I have a question here for Maria. In terms of um, in terms of co-producing with a Spanish producer, uh, is there a particular type of international film that works well with Spanish audiences? Obviously, beyond Hollywood titles. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what to say to tell you the truth. I mean, I don't think there's a particular type of international film. Um, I think I've co-produced uh, as a minority co-producer, mostly with Latin American country, that's true. And I keep on doing, um, we're preparing another film with Argentina as a minority uh, co-producer. So it's true that um, I have, uh, my experience is more with uh, Spanish uh, speaking films. But of course, when I go to co-production markets, and, and, and that maybe is because of uh, San Sebastian Corporate Action Forum, of course. But when I go to other markets, we have uh, uh, films uh, from other countries. I also try to do it. And since uh, we hadn't have before this funding that I was talking about before, it has been quite difficult when we didn't have this uh, in, in order to get a co-production from other countries. But a type of film, mm, especially, no, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think there's this type of film specifically, no. And in, um, have you felt, Marielle, I don't know if you have felt or you fear the effect of uh, Brexit in terms of, you know, how that might uh, affect your, your future, you know, partnerships with, uh, with Spanish producers? Um, actually, as I was explaining before, uh, the European Convention has this, uh, this uh, uh, issue going on about how to define a European work. And there is, a, I, I, I'm, I'm part of the board of a, of a production associ association of producers that belong also to an association of produce, European producers. And, and they are talking about this issue because of the Brexit, that maybe we have uh, to be more specific of what is a European work in order not to get UK productions that maybe are also US productions into the same, you know, part of European production. So yeah, that, that's an issue, of course, yeah. And Marielle, would you like to, to add to that? Yes, I think um, it's it will of it of course is affecting um, the the UK industry in a lot of different ways. Um, I think you know one of the big ways is is visas and immigration and uh, and bringing talent in and the idea that we had um, a Europe that had free movement um, bringing collaborators to the UK, that's going to be an area that's really affected. And I think, um, to be honest, I think a lot of us are still uh, working out exactly how it will affect our business going forward. I think it's been such an incredibly long drawn out process that still even, you know, in 2020, um, we, were, we were kind of assessing how it, things might affect us in particular as an international sales company. Um, so yes, I think it, is, it certainly is devastating. Um, it was devastating news. Uh, I think things like the primary incentives and tax credit legislation will remain in place for us. But again, there's, as I mentioned, just a, a one example that in terms of movement between countries that's going to affect things quite a bit. 
And um, well, also um, what I was curious to know is um, how you, you get the information to sort of make you want to jump on board, Marielle. Uh, you know, how, how you get to know and how that, could that improve in terms of knowing the companies? Uh, so what, what's the best way, not only the companies, but also the projects that might be of interest to you? In terms of um, in terms of when pitching a project or kind of more generally, well, in terms of uh, producing, you know, from jump, jumping on board at, a, at an early stage or or later on with pitching. Yeah, I think again we look at projects um, at every different stage, but I think it's in it's mutually beneficial to work with a sales company at an early stage. Um, and that's because uh, we can really help marry the sales strategy with the um, overall financial elements of the film and the budget and the scale. Um, we can also be very helpful in conversations surrounding cast and exactly what level of cast you may need to achieve with your project. So I think in terms of, of strategy, we really love to collaborate early. Um, and uh, and yes, I would I would yeah emphasize reaching out at an early stage to um, to us in particular whether that's um, so we can continue to track the pro track the project perhaps at a if you are pitching at a, a co production market I think um, a lot of times um, it's it's wonderful to see the projects being pitched at these forums and then you see them several years later premiering at a festival and I think for us it's um, it's an early game of, of, of tracking these projects. Uh, Mayalen, uh, you yes. want to add to that? Yes, for, I, I wanted to say that for everyone who is interested to jump on board in Spanish spoken uh, films, I think uh, that they should participate in the co-production forum between Europe and Latin American countries that it's going to be held in the San Sebastian Film Festival. And also there, uh, they will be able to hear the pitchings of the project of the residency program, Icus Vida Berriac. So there, there are a lot of new talents and I think it's an interesting place, you know, to get to know what's going to be next in the, in the next couple of years. Yeah, let's see, we have time for two more questions. Um, Maria, I think this one is for, for you. Um, how does the intense production activity of streaming platforms affect the working conditions of Spanish film crews and cast? Are working hours, minimum wages, et cetera, respected in these productions? Yes, um, for sure. I mean, the, the, um, the, the wages, of course, the minimum wages have, uh, have been respected. The collective, um, um, I don't know how to say, it, but uh, like the syndicate of, uh, of uh, cast and crew in Spain, they have been talking about this a lot and they have uh, managed to become to an agreement. And so, of course, the platforms are uh, committed to that and they are respecting the wages and of course the time, the, the hours of shooting. Uh, that's my experience. And uh, that is something that is good for the crew and the cast. Um, and uh, yeah, I would say yes. And very quickly to Mayalen uh, and Maria, if you could um, explain um, what's behind this new wave of, uh, which is very relevant of uh, a lot of uh, women directors in Spain. Mayalen? Uh, yes, from my point of view and taking the numbers of the people who have been participating in the uh, development uh, programs such as the residency program. Most of our residents are women. And I think that's because, you know, a lot of that's the, the, the way it should be. I mean, they are the best projects that are being selected and they are, uh, in this case, women. Uh, we had like uh, Elena Lopez Riera, uh, Jayone Camborda, Maider Oleaga, Maider Fernandez Iriarte. I think that these uh, young filmmakers, they are making their first steps and that they will, I hope they will have a really long trajectory in the film business. And uh, for us as a festival, it's important to promote uh, to young uh, women filmmakers so that they can start uh, you know, with their first or second films. 
I'm afraid we're running short of time. Uh, very quickly, very quickly uh, to wrap things up, I would like to thank you. And also, if you could answer or react to the fact that, uh, you know, um, Johnny Depp is going to be honored at the, at the San Sebastian Film Festival. So what are your feelings towards that? If you could be very quick about it, if you have any comments on it. I feel like I should start, but uh, well, I, I don't have anything else to say. I think the pre uh, festival released the press release with the reasons, and uh, I don't have any further comment on this topic. I don't know if Maria or Marielle want to add anything. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't know the exact um, uh, um, facts about this person's life. I just know what it was told in the press, but I, I don't know exactly. I think the San Sebastian Film Festival did the research enough to know if this person could be uh, awarded. Uh, I don't know anything else. Maybe it was just a bad timing, that's all. I don't think uh, that I think they did the job in those terms. Okay, so uh, with this last question from the audience, we'll have to wrap things up. Thanks again for such uh, interesting insights and uh, it was a pleasure uh, talking and listening to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.